Okay, so let's say you're on a mission to uh, to make a real difference mm -hmm. with your organization. You're doing incredible work, but now it's all about getting the funds right. to take it to that next level. Right? Absolutely. But let's be real, grant writing, yeah. it can be super daunting. Oh, it can be very intimidating for sure. I can feel like you're staring at a blank page yeah. and you don't know where to even start. Right. And that's why we're doing this deep dive, to give you the tools and the knowledge that you need to create an amazing grant proposal. Absolutely. So we are diving into how to write a program grant proposal, which is a study guide designed to make this whole process way less scary. Yeah. And give you the confidence to really tell your organization's story mm. in a way that's going to resonate with funders. Well, and what I think is so interesting about this is grant writing, it's not just filling out some forms, right? Right. It's really about capturing the essence of what your organization does mm. and translating that to a compelling story and showcasing that why, the passion, the dedication, the impact, so that funders, they just have to get on board. It's about taking all of that energy and drive that you have internally and sharing it with the world. Exactly. Right? And one of the things that our guide really emphasizes as a key element to that is having a really strong mission statement. Yeah. say it needs to be more than just a tagline. For sure. This is like your organization's DNA. It is. It needs to really capture the core of what you do and why you exist. It's that foundation. And just like DNA has to be very clear and precise, your statement does too. Yeah. Because you've got to cut through all the noise out there and very succinctly articulate your purpose, mm -hmm. your audience, your methods, yeah. so that someone who doesn't know you can instantly connect with what you do. It's giving me almost like movie trailer vibes you know <laughs> yes where you see the trailer you're like i have to see that movie exactly that's what we want our mission statement to do oh. and to help you get that clarity the guide actually gives a really good tip which is to create a mission statement worksheet okay so you can like brainstorm on paper hmm. you jot down key phrases i love that that really capture the essence of what you do refine the language refine 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 and then boom you've got your mission statement i love that strategy i think anything that gets us to really distill what we do down to the most important things yeah. is fantastic it's like finding that perfect sound bite it is so if the mission statement is the dna then our guide says the vision statement is like your north star Yes. It's that big, inspiring vision of the future that you're working towards. It's that future state, right? Yeah. So the mission statement is very much what you're doing in the present, mm -hmm. but the vision is that beautiful picture of the future yes. that you're trying to create. And it's what ignites hope in people and inspires action yes. because you're showcasing this transformative change. And this is where we can really use powerful language. Yeah. Our guide suggests using really evocative language mm -hmm to paint a picture that connects with people emotionally. Yeah, because instead of just saying, and this is a very generic statement, we aim to reduce poverty, which, you know, that's good. Right. But what if you said, we envision a future where every individual has the opportunity to thrive and reach their full potential free from the constraints of poverty. Oh, that's so much more powerful. Right. It's really about making that emotional connection. Right. And speaking of connection, our guide emphasizes aligning your vision statement with the values of your potential funders. Of course. Because it's about finding that common ground. Absolutely, because you're building a bridge then between your aspirations yeah. and their philanthropic goal. Okay, so we've got our mission. We painted a picture of our vision. We do. Now we need to bring in the why now factor. Yes. And that is the case statement. It is, and this is where the rubber meets the road. Because yeah. we're going from these inspiring aspirations to demonstrating why your work is so needed right now. Yes. And why your organization is the one to do it. The guide calls this your organization's sales pitch. Yes. This is where you grab their attention. Yes. You convince them of how important this problem is. Right. And show them that you have the solution. And we do that by crafting a story. Okay. That connects your organization's history, the problem that you're addressing, mm -hmm. and why your solution is the answer. It's really about storytelling with a purpose. Yes. And our guide actually gives us a really good framework for how to structure this narrative. Okay. So they say we start by setting the stage right, mm -hmm. give a really concise overview of your organization's background, you know, what you've accomplished. So it's like you're saying, hey, we've got experience. Yes. We know what we're doing. We've had success. And here's why you can trust us. We're the right people for the job. Exactly. Establish that credibility from the get-go. Got it. 
And then we get into the heart of the case statement, and that's the problem statement. Yep. This is where you're really presenting this issue you're tackling, and it has to be impossible to ignore. Yeah, you really have to drive home that urgency. Yes, you do. And the guide says that we need to use hard data, but then also weave in compelling storytelling. Absolutely, because we need to paint this vivid picture using statistics, right. but also real life examples. So it's like we want them to see the numbers, yeah. but also feel the emotion. Yes, because for example, let's say your organization provides after school programs for underserved youth. No. Instead of saying many children lack access to quality after school care. Which is vague. Which is, you know, it's true. It's true. But, but it, it doesn't grab you. What if we said, in our community, over 60% of children are from low-income families, and they struggle to afford after-school programs? This lack of access can be devastating because then we see lower academic achievement. There's an increased risk of them being involved in risky behaviors, and they just have very limited opportunities for growth. Wow. Okay. So you've taken those statistics, and then you've really spelled out the why should we care. Yes. What are those consequences? But then to really bring it home even more, maybe tell a story about one specific child who's really benefited from your program. Precisely. Because that's how we combine that data and we make it relatable. Yes. It makes it real. It does. Because statistics alone can feel kind of cold, right? They can. But then if you put that human face on it. Yes. It really, really connects. It does. It brings it to life. So once we've really explained the problem and why it matters right now. Right. The guide says we transition to what they call the solution section. We do, and this is where your organization gets to be the hero. This is where you showcase what you're doing that's different, that's innovative. Yes. What makes you uniquely equipped to tackle this problem? Exactly. Don't be shy to talk about your strengths, your successes. Toot your own horn a little bit. Yes. We've identified the need. Now here's how we're going to fix it. Yes, this is how we're going to do it. Okay. So before we jump ahead to actually writing the proposal. Yes. Our guide has a really important reminder, which is that we need to do some prep work. Yes. And this is where I see a lot of people just skip ahead, right? It's tempting. It is tempting. But this groundwork is so important. It is. It is. And the first thing our guide says, okay, make sure you have that IRS letter of determination. Yes, the golden ticket. Yes. For anyone who's not familiar with that, that letter is basically proof that you are a legitimate 501c3 organization. Exactly. And it is required by most funders. So it's non-negotiable. Non-negotiable. If you don't have it, you might as well not even have a proposal. You're not even getting in the door. You're not getting in the door. So before we even think about writing that narrative, yes. get that document. Do it. Okay. And then once we have that, the guide talks about the importance of data collection mm. and not just any data. Right. We need hard data and soft data. Yeah. So... Can we break those down a little bit? What does that even mean? Of course. So hard data, think of this as the backbone of your argument. Okay. This is the numbers, mm -hmm. the statistics, the cold, hard evidence that backs up everything you're saying. So let's say, you know, you've got this program and it's designed to really improve literacy rates. All right. Well, you could include statistics about the current literacy levels of your target population. Got it. So we're painting that picture with the numbers. Yes. No, soft data. This is where we add the emotion. Got this on. is about those stories, the anecdotes, the testimonials that really bring that problem to life and show how your work is making a difference. So with our literacy program, we might share a story about, you know, a parent whose child has just blossomed as a reader. Yes. Because of your program. Yeah. Or a student who now has the confidence to read out loud in class. I love that. Because those stories, you know, they connect. They connect. You can't argue with that. And our guide even says, come up with a system where you are constantly collecting both types of data. Okay, so it's like, always be prepared. Always be prepared, because then you've got this arsenal of information ready to go. Love it. Okay, so we've got our data. We've got our IRS letter. Oh, good. <laughs> We're feeling good. We're ready to dive in to the actual proposal itself. Yes. And our guide says we start with prospect research. We do, because so many organizations, they just want to jump into writing. But you have to find the right funding source. Right. It has to be a good fit. It does. It has to be a good fit for you, a good fit for them. It's like dating. You don't go on a date with someone you know nothing about. Right. You want to make sure you have some shared interests. Exactly. You're on the same page. You are. And this is where you really need to dive deep into their website. Okay. Read their mission statement, their funding priorities, see what they've supported in the past. It's the sense of their vibe. Yes. And a little tip. Look at the annual reports for foundations. 
Oh, smart. Because they often showcase their success stories, so you get a feel for what they like. I love that. Okay, so we found our perfect match. We're feeling good about it. We are. We know what they want. Now we need to wow them with the project description. Yes. This is it. This is the heart of your proposal. Yes. This is where we roll up our sleeves. We get down to business. This is where we're saying, here's what we're going to do. Here's our plan. We thought it through. It's realistic. We can do it. Yes. And the guide actually breaks this section down even further. It does. So I say, start with a really clear statement of your overall goal. What is that big, hairy, audacious goal? Yes. What are we hoping to accomplish? Yes. So for our literacy program, our overall goal might be to, I don't know, significantly improve reading comprehension. I love it. Among, let's say, third graders. Okay. In underserved communities. Love it. But we don't just stop there. No. Because that's the big goal. Now we break it down into smaller, measurable objectives. Okay, those stepping stones. Yes. How are we going to get there? So an objective could be, I don't know, Increment the average reading comprehension score. Love it. By a certain percentage. Yes. By the end of the program. Notice how specific that is. It's measurable. Yeah. It's time bound. We can track it. We can track it. And then we have to explain the activities. What are you actually going to do to make those objectives happen? So this is where we get into the curriculum we're going to use. Mm -hmm. What kind of training are we giving our staff? Are we partnering with any schools? What does that schedule look like? Yes. All of those details that bring it to life. And then don't forget evaluation. Yes. Because we need to show them that we're measuring our success. Yes. Funders want to know, are you making a difference? It's not enough to just want to do good. We have to prove that we're doing good. You do. Okay. So one section that I think a lot of people get really kind of nervous about is the budget. I understand. Because it can be really intimidating. It can be, but our guide breaks it down so clearly. Okay, good. And the first thing they say is we have to know the difference between an operational budget, which covers the organization as a whole. Right. Your operating costs. And then a program budget, which is specifically for the project we're asking them to fund. Because we wouldn't include things like our rent or our, you know, salaries for people who aren't working on this program right. oh, in this budget. Exactly. It's only the costs for this program. So for our literacy program, it would be like buying the books and the materials and the training for the tutors, the transportation maybe for the kids. Exactly. The direct costs. Exactly. It's about making it crystal clear what you need to make this happen. And within that program budget, our guide suggests we break it down even further into personnel costs and then also non-personnel costs. Okay. So personnel costs would be like salaries and benefits for everybody who's actually hands-on working in the program, like our awesome literacy tutors. Yes, exactly. And then non-personnel costs. That's everything else. All those essential materials, equipment, maybe even things like transportation or evaluation services. The key here is be as specific as you possibly can. It's like we're giving them a shopping list for success. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Instead of just saying $5,000 for supplies, we would say $2,000 for books, $1,500 for educational games, Another 1500 for art supplies so kids can get creative with their writing. Now you're talking. That level of detail shows that you're being transparent. You've thought this through, and that really builds confidence that you're going to use their money wisely. And while we're talking about being wise with money, let's not forget about those indirect costs. They're kind of easily overlooked. Yeah, these are the behind-the-scenes things that are still so important. Right. They're like the unsung heroes of the nonprofit world, those administrative costs that keep everything running smoothly. It's like you can't have this amazing literacy program if you don't have an office or internet or somebody mm -hmm. to, you know, make sure you're pay the bills. Exactly. You need those support systems. So we want to make sure that we're including a reasonable percentage for those administrative costs and overhead costs as well. Yes. And our guide even mentions that a lot of funders have like specific guidelines about this. Oh, good to know. Yeah. So do your research. Make sure you're following their rules because you want to show them that you pay attention to detail. Okay. So now we've got our budget all polished and ready to go. And it's time to really show them what you're made of highlight those organizational strengths, build that credibility. And our guide calls this the organizational information section. This is where we really get to brag a little. Yes, brag a little. Talk about your history, your mission, your accomplishments, those amazing programs you run, anything that shows you're the expert in this field. 
And don't be shy about highlighting your amazing team. Oh, yes. Those rock star staff members. Right. Give them a little bio, you know. Talk about their experience, their passion, why they're the perfect people to make this project a success. We want the funders to feel like they're investing in the best of the best. Absolutely. Now, for the moment, you've all been waiting for the make or break section of your proposal, according to our guide, the executive summary. Ooh, this is it. This is your elevator pitch. You've got a very short amount of time to grab their attention and make them want to read more. So it's got to be good. It's like the first page of a really good book. Exactly. And to help us craft an executive summary that really sings the guide, recommends a specific structure. We start by clearly stating the funding request. How much money are you asking for? Cut to the chase. Then, in just a few sentences, you're going to introduce your organization, highlight the problem, give them a glimpse of your solution and the impact it's going to have. So we're taking that whole proposal and boiling it down to the most important parts. Yes, every single word matters. Choose powerful language, be clear, be concise, make it memorable. We're aiming for maximum impact. We want them to read this and be like, wow, I need to learn more. That's it. Okay, we've covered so much today from that killer mission statement to that fine-tuned budget and that impressive executive summary. You've basically built the foundation for a winning grant proposal, but what are those final steps before we hit submit? What are those finishing touches? Organization is key, my friend. Our guide gives us a handy-dandy checklist to make sure we're not forgetting anything important. That cover letter, make sure it's compelling. Your proposal itself, of course, that all-important IRS determination letter, those financials make sure they're perfect. It's about crossing your T's and dotting your I's. Don't let those little details trip you up. Exactly. And speaking of that cover letter, it's more than just a formality. Right. It's another chance to connect with them personally. It is. Our guide says start strong, maybe reference a previous conversation, cl clearly state what you're asking for and the name of the project, and make sure you highlight how your work lines up with what they care about. It's like saying, hey, we did our homework. We're a good match. Let's make a difference together. Yes. And when it comes to actually submitting that masterpiece of yours, professionalism is key. Follow their guidelines to a T. Some might want it online. Others might want a physical copy. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. And always, always submit early. Never wait till the last minute. Never, because nothing says we're organized and reliable like a last minute scramble. Exactly. So there you have it. You are now well on your way to navigating the world of grant proposals with confidence and finesse. We've broken it down. We've demystified the process. Hopefully made it a little less scary. And way more fun. Yes. And most importantly, we've given you the tools to go out and make a real difference. So as you start your grant writing journey, remember, it's about more than just the money. It's about sharing your passion, telling your story, building those relationships, and creating lasting change. Go out and make your dreams a reality. You got this.